at defensive end, number 91. Odie Obilo, number 91. Hello, everyone. I am Justin Rubino, and to my right, I am joined by Dave Rogers. As we look over our shoulder, Hurricane Isabel has passed, and we're ready for a great night of football. Dave, what do you think some of the keys are to tonight's game? Well, the keys to success for Northern Highlands are to play like they did against Mawa in the first half, and for Hills, it's the running attack with Pete DeSico back in the lineup. They're going to look to give him at least 30 one. touches and have over Joe 100 Jim yards Tucker, on the ground tonight. Number one. And Wayne Hills is coming off a devastating loss last week, 21 to 10. Um, number the defense played all right. A couple Green. bad special team returned. But, and also on the defensive side, Chaz Lynn, as we all know, is out with a shoulder injury. Who's going to have to step up? Yes, uh, defensive Vendelli, backs that are going to fill his place are Ryan Mink. He's going to have to play pretty tough to fill the big at shoes that Chaz Lynn felt left behind. Pagano, and also tonight, we have uh, gotten some information that Nick Wurzel, the junior, is going to start over Jesse Farina. 20, what are your thoughts on Nick Wurzel? I like Nick Wurzel. He's a, a big 20. kid, 6'5", got a good, strong arm, that's and he's the type of kid that five, Division One coaches Ryan look at. So I think he's going to do a good five. job tonight and lead the Wayne Hills to maybe their first victory of this season. Kind of reminds me of a Dante Culpepper type nine, quarterback. Kyle big kid, can Kyle run a little, he's got a very strong arm. Yes. Nine, and also tonight, the linebackers, headed by Chris Embelli, really have to step up against this run on this run defense. Andrew yes, last week against uh, Indian Hills, Brian Bergon struggled a little bit. He looks to come back and make some key defensive tackles. Ladies and and right now, we are going to throw it down to our sideline reporter, Grant Till, for an interview. bit of overconfidence. We'll be fine this week. I think the kids had a great week of practice. Yes, now, uh, tell me, what is your prediction for this game? Uh, we win by double digits. There you have it, Mr. John Mink. Back to you, Dave and Justin. And right now we are going to pause for the singing of the national anthem. And the North won Group 3 state champions from last year, Wayne Hills, ready to kick off their home opener. Against Northern Highlands. That was the Star Spangled Banner by the Wayne Hills Patriots Band. Hey, should we send it from the monitor? Nah. It's probably straight. You wanna? That doesn't matter. I like it better like this. They are money. Ladies and, and the cap gentlemen. the captains are getting ready to go to midfield. The Wayne Hills P Patriots captains are number 34, Chris Zambelli, number 51, Dan Domicoli, number 22, Andrew Bucci, and number 41, who is out for the game, Chaz Lynn. Chaz Lynn has a broken collarbone. He's out probably the six weeks. The heart and soul of this Wayne Hills team, they look to complete complete a uh, winning season without him for most of the season. For the and for the Northern Highland Highlanders, the captains are number 50, Mike West, an offensive guard and a linebacker. Number 63, Brandon Batch, who is also an offensive lineman and a defensive end. And number 84, Spencer Johnson, who is a split end and a defensive back. And right now we can see Nick Wurzel warming up with Ryan Mink on the sideline. Captain Andrew Bucci and Captain Dan Damacoli. With the captains at midfield, the ref will begin the coin toss ritual. And the Wayne Hills team won the coin toss, but will defer. Dave, what are your predictions on tonight's game? Um, 
for tonight's game. I, I like Wayne Hill's strong team, hungry for their first win of the season, looking really to bounce back from that loss to Indian Hills. I think they'll come away with the victory tonight. And also, as the crowd and the band start to fill the bleachers, they also have a home field advantage tonight, which could play key in the fourth Wayne quarter. Wayne Hill will kick off yep. and defend the south goal. As you heard from the announcer, Wayne Hills will kick off and defend the south goal, and the Highlanders will receive. Wayne Hills uses, has used three possible kickers on the season in the first game. Number 16, who is Nick Wurzel playing quarterback. Number 9, Kyle Cavanaugh. And number 22, Andrew Bucci. Not sure right now who's going to do the kickoff duties. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a silver Pontiac license plate number. Last week, I know, and I think Andrew Bucci was primary kicker. He kicked the extra points last week. Are on. And Bucci is going to be the kicker tonight. Nick Romeo looks like he's going to hold the ball. The wind is pretty severe coming right at our faces. It, it could affect the, the kick. Number 19, Nick Romeo. Oh. Scratch that. Nick Romeo is going to be doing the kicking duties tonight. Scratch my statements before. Uh, Romeo, not even one of the three possibilities I named. And for the Highlanders, one of the main returners back there is number 38, J.R. Signs. And, and the kick. Looks like it's going to go to Signs, who fields it at around the 10-yard line. Runs up the left sideline and is taken down around the 25-yard line. So we'll get our first home field look at the Wayne Hills defense. They are the starting defense the for Wayne return. Hills. I will give you that in a second. But as we know, the heart and soul of this defense is Chris Sambelli, the very built, big, Chris tough Chris senior Sambelli. with a lot of heart, manning the middle of this defense. Chris Zambelli has been recruited by several Division I schools. He's the type of player that... He's the type of player that, that can lead your team to several victories, even, even though he is a defensive player. And here we see on the first play of the game, number 34 for the Highlanders, who would be Steve Rosado, first right up the middle for about 15 yards and a first down. Rosado's a strong back with a lot of quickness, and you see as he goes right between the tackle and the guard for a nice gain. Offensive line right there, got a great push as Rosado pretty much could have drove a truck through that hole. So a shaky start for the Wayne Hills defense. Let's see what they do on this play. Rosado once again in the backfield. Two wide receivers split out to each side. There's a snap, and Rosado once again goes up the middle, but this time Wayne Hills is able to corral him at the near the line of scrimmage for about a three-yard gain. And I like this theory by Northern Rosado Highlands. They're going to test this Wayne Hills carry. defense. Last week they gave up a lot of yards on the ground, and Northern Highlands looks to do the same. And as we know, the running game can set up the passing game with play action. Yep. Tackled by Obilo and Zambelli. So Zambelli already getting it on the action, making the tackle. A bunch formation for Northern Highlands this time. And once again, Rosado is going to go up the middle, but gets stuffed at the, off at the offensive line. Passing situation here with third and about seven to go. Tackled by G and Papa. G and Papa on the tackle. I like this Wayne Hills defense. They give up a tough, a, a long run to start the game, and then they stuff them twice, two times in a row. Play, third and six. Third and six on the play. Northern Highlands is looking for a pass play to get this first down. So very early in the game, the secondary looks to get tested, but not many wide receivers in the field right now. Once again, a bunch formation. But number three, for the quarterback, Joe Torre, Steps back, but rolls out to the left and is stopped at the line of scrimmage. So that's fourth down. We're going to see the punting teams. Lauren on the keeper, brought down by Dave Lauren and Joe Giampapa. And Dave Lauren, the junior who took off a year last year, was not on the team. Back, and he's making a difference in this Wayne Hills team, coming up with a big tackle there on third and six. And deep to return for the Wayne Hills Patriots is Pete DeSico, the junior starting running back, and Andrew Bucci. Wayne Hills might be looking for a little razzle-dazzle here, maybe a reverse or a fake reverse. It looks like Wayne Hills is not going to put much pressure on this punter, but they're going to look to make a big return. 
and Wayne Hill's got the pressure but couldn't block the kick, and Bucci's going to field it at around the 20-yard line. Tries to break a tackle, but unsuccessful. Gets it up to around the 29-yard line, where Nick Wurzel will lead the offensive team. And number 51, Chris Halpin, absolutely tattoos number 20, Danny uh, Pete DeSico. Can you believe that? That was a hit. DeSico takes him down after the play, but you can take, tell he was shaking on that one. DeSico was trying to be a team player, get the lead block, but he got flattened. DeSico so, in the eye back. And they give it to the fullback right there, who I believe is Chris Zambelli for about a two yard gain. Zambelli, big kid. Good lead blocker, and every now and then he can break it for some yards. He does have the 10, 20 yard quickness that a lot of fullbacks in this day and age have. Zambelli uses that strength to get a little farther than at first look, carried the pile an extra two yards, so it's going to be second and six. Gain of three, second and seven. Wurzel under center with his two receivers, Mink and Bucci split out to the right. And they fake and the carry to Zambelli up the middle, and DeSico's going to the outside. He might break it, and he gets all the way down to around the 45-yard line. There's a flag on the play. Might be a face mask on the Highlanders. Some laundry on the field, maybe a face mask, maybe a hold. We'll get the call from the ref. And right there, DeSico displayed amazing quickness, hitting the outside, and he was not going to be stopped before he got the first down and well more. The refs right now are talking it over. And it looks like it's going to be on Wayne Hills as they, the offensive unit returns way by the first down marker. Holding against the Patriots. But the pen although there was and holding on Wayne Hills, there was also the a face mask on the Highlanders. So that's offsetting penalties. And they're going to start do replay the down. You know that's unfortunate. DeSico got his first run, run of the year, and it was a good solid run, but it's going to get taken back. First run of the year, yes, as last week he was suspended for disciplinary reasons. Tonight, they're really going to need him to step up. As everyone knows, Wayne Hills is definitely a run-based team. And without Chaz Lynn, DeSico has to be a star. So DeSico is going to get the carry again. Breaks a tackle in the backfield, but not able to escape. Number 50, who I believe is one of the captains for the Highlanders, Mike West. DeSico with a strong spin move on the first hit, but as he spins away, another Norland Highlands defender tackles him for about a, about a one-yard loss. And right now it's going to be third and eight, and maybe we'll see Wurzel's strong arm on this play. Nick Wurzel has a cannon, and he also has the ability to scramble out of the pocket if he gets in trouble. And with Greg Olson uh, graduating last year, you got to imagine the receivers are going to get more involved this year for the Patriots. Wurzel takes a five-step drop in the pocket, can't find anyone, tries to screen, and it's nearly picked off by the Highlanders. Number 80, it looks like, who would be Brendan Woods, the de starting defensive end. And we're going to see the punt formation for Wayne Hills. So Hills sputtering on offense, a quick three and out as they're going to punt it away. Jesse Farina back to punt. And Northern Highlands also with two men to receive. And there is a flag on the play. You gotta imagine it's gonna be offsides on the defense or holding on offense. That ball took a Wayne Hills bounce and they'll down it at the 30, at, the, at, about the, at about the 40 yard line. We're gonna have to see what the flag is about though. The ref's trying to figure out what the call is going to be here as Farina walks over there to hear the call and we're about to be informed and I think that's an illegal substitution on the defense which would be I think a five yard penalty so it's still going to be fourth down no. or is that that's an automatic first down for the Wayne Hills Patriots so they're, they're going to get a second chance gift wrapped it and handed to them to try and put some points on the board the call is illegal participation, and Wayne Hills gets an automatic first down. A big break for Wayne Hills, and they'll have another fresh set of downs with the ball on the 45-yard line. And that's a 15-yard penalty now. If the illegal substitution had come into the game and not really done anything, I imagine it would have been a five-yard penalty. But since I think he downed it or participated on the play, then that's a 15-yard penalty, an automatic first down. So Wurzel under center with 
Bucci and Minx spread out to either side and DeSico pounding it up the middle, carrying the pile for about six yards. This is exactly what I said about this kid, Pete DeSico, well built, strong, fast runner, and he pounds away for about five, six yards. So Nick Romeo is coming into the game for Andrew Bucci right now, so you gotta imagine they're gonna be running it. And they do, they pound Zambelli right up the middle and easily shake some arm tackles and another first down for Wayne Hills. Zambelli Zambelli showing his toughness as he gets about seven yards for the first down. First down, Patriots. Ball spotted on the Highlander 42. comes into the huddle at around the 50-yard line. He gives the play to his players and he's going to get ready to execute it. DeSico gets the carry again, bounces it outside, and he has something here, and it looks like it's about a 12-yard gain for another first down, as Wayne Hills is doing just what they want to do, pound the ball and get first downs. They need to give DeSico 30 touches today, and if they give him 30 touches, they will win this ball game. Their running attack was weak last week, and if they can change that this week, they'll have a shot at winning this. And if DeSico and Zambelli keep this up, the Northern Highlanders' uh, defense is going to be very tired in the fourth quarter. And Wurzel pitches it to the left to DeSico. Zambelli with the lead block, but... DeSico gets nailed about three yards in front of the line of scrimmage, but able to keep his feet and pick up another yard. You know, I talked to Pete DeSico today. And he was completely focused on this game. All he was talking about was how he wanted to run all over this Northern Highlands defense. And, and he's showing that he wants to do that tonight with his play on the field. you got to imagine he was heartbroken when last week he was suspended the day of the opening game. And tonight he's going to come out with a chip on his shoulder and take it out on the Highlanders' defense. Without a doubt, having DeSico in that game would have made a big difference as, as Wayne Hills was was void of any offensive presence in that game. Ryan Mink, the lone wide receiver, set way out to the right on the top of your screen. Zambelli comes in motion, so they have a power formation. Got to imagine it's going to DeSico, but it's play action. Wurzel rolling out to his right. He's going to keep it, and he has a lot of room, and he picks up the first down easily, but there's a flag on the play. It might be holding. Wardwell on the keeper. Some launch on the field, maybe an illegal formation or a, or a legal motion. We're not sure. We're going to get the call from the ref. The call is a legal motion on the, play. on the Wayne Hills Patriots. That's a heartbreaker. Wurzel broke a big run out to the right side, but it's coming back, and they're going to replay illegal second down. The and one thing we all know Olsen does not like is penalties. Careless penalties can really kill a drive. And Olsen is really having a long talk with Wurzel on the sideline, getting him this play. Might not have liked Wurzel's decision on that play. Center Scott Gielock runs to the line, and Wurzel right behind him, ready to hike the ball. As Ryan Mink, once again, the lone wide receiver. And it looks like they're going to try the same play, but this time they do hand it off. And DeSico gets about four yards, gets back to the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third down in around nine. Spencer Johnson. Seco, tough Johnson runner. He, he's got a, over 30 yards already tonight, and he, he's really he's really trying to make a difference tonight. Third and, and right now you see a shot of the cheerleaders who put a lot of effort into their cheers every week. And Wayne Hills calls a timeout. Time Olsen wants to discuss million. with his offensive units this critical third down in the early going. Third and long on this play, and Olsen wants to have a talk with Warzel before they execute this. And during this timeout, we're going to try and get you an interview down on the field, but it doesn't look like there's anyone interesting down there to interview at this moment. What do you think Olsen's telling his troops right now? I think he's tell I think he's he's gonna he's gonna uh, surprise this Northern Highlands defense maybe with that same pitch play that he gave to DeSico earlier in the game, but uh, 
I, I definitely think that it's going to be a run. He's not going to want to risk the interceptions. Turnovers are a big, big no-no with Coach Olsen. You He's might see the, uh, the, the Hollanders' defense bringing an extra cornerback or safety on this play because they're going to be expecting pass. Maybe Olsen will try a little play action, or maybe that's what the Highlanders are looking for. So probably the wisest thing is to run it because DeSego has short hands. He's not going to fumble the ball. Maybe he'll get close enough to try a field goal. Nick Warzel would be the field goal kicker. He has a great, great leg. And the Patriots are ready to begin play again as Bucci is split out to the top of your screen. Mink on the bottom, DeSego on the background. And it's play action. Wurzel is being pressured but rolls out to his right. And he is going to lose a lot of yards down to around the 39-yard line. One thing on third down you don't want to do is get sacked. You can't eat the ball on a play like that. At least throw it out of bounds because right now they're way out of field goal range. They're going to have to punt it away. And Coach Olsen is really giving some lip to Wurzel on the sideline. He did not like his decision. And he's going to have the long, hard talk with him about what he's doing in tonight's game. Farina's going to try and They're pin the Highlanders down at the goal line. It's a great punt, but number 19, I believe is Romeo, right? could not field it. He had a chance, but it took a bad bounce, went to the back of the end zone, and the Highlanders are going to begin at the 20. Nick Romeo, sophomore, only plays varsity. He's that good. When he's a senior, he's going to be something else. I think Olsen said in the paper the other day, during all his years of coaching here, he's only started six sophomores on the varsity team, so that's saying something for this kid, Romeo. Although he's not starting, he is still getting substantial playing time as a special teams player and also a uh, split-end receiver. And one of those six sophomores, who is now a senior, is Chris Zambelli, manning the middle of this defense. And the Highlanders are going to try and run it on first down. And number 34, Rosado absolutely gets leveled on the bottom of your screen, but picks up a good six yards, a very good gain on first down. Kyle Cavanaugh, a strong safety, lays, lays the lumber down on Rosado. Gain of six, second and four. The ball spotted on the Highlander 27. The Highlanders come to the line of scrims with only one receiver and two tight ends, a fullback and a running back. And a little confusion on the play it looked like, but they gave it to the fullback up the middle for about a two yard gain. It's gonna be third and short. Mike Geary on the carry. Wouldn't be surprised right here to see uh, the Highlanders go with play action and look deep. Wayne Hills is going to pinch. Wayne Hills is going to pinch up their defense, try to clog the middle, prevent any run possibility for this Northern Highlands. They're going to try to force the punt. Right now they're playing a 4-4-3 with only three defensive backs and eight men in the box. As Bucci comes up and plays linebacker, so right now nine men in the box. Motion by the Highlanders, the snap, and it's a fake up the middle. And the Patriots defend it beautifully as a combo tackle by Bucci and number nine, unsure of the name right there, with a great hit forcing fourth down. Number nine would be Kyle Cavanaugh again, so two big hits right there for the junior. And it Kyle looks like... Kyle Cavanaugh, real, he's really playing great tonight. He already has two tackles on two consecutive plays, forces the punt for Northern Highlands. You know, th this kid's something else. And it does look like the Highlanders are going to punt, maybe thinking about going it, but way too deep in their own territory to try something here. And Unless they are going for it, it looks like. About no, two they are punting minutes it. left in the second qu first quarter. This isn't the time for go to go for it early in the game. So smart play right here to just punt it away. And there's a flag on the play. And that will be a delay of game, and the Highlanders will move back five yards. Flag delay of game against the Highlanders. DeSico and Bucci talking some strategy down at around the 35-yard line. Two very explosive players. Wouldn't surprise me to see them get a big gain right here. And a good punt by number 16 as he falls to try and get a call from the ref, but no doing. 
And the punt goes out at around the 42. That was a pretty good punt. By number 16, P.J. Pichachi. The Patriots will take over first. Wars is going to come back on the field, see if he can lead his offense down the field once again. And uh, he had a long, hard talk with Olsen. I, I don't expect any mistakes from him on this drive. After what Olsen saw from Wurzel on the play where he dropped back a little too far, you got to think that he's going to start off with three straight runs on this drive. And they started off with one as Pete DeSico tries to bounce it to the outside, but is stopped easily for about a one-yard loss. DeSico, a strong runner. He's not much of an east-west runner, more of a north-south guy. He's got to stay between those tackles, and then he can break it outside. Does have good speed once he can get behind some defenders. No gain on the play. And the captain, Mike West, I believe, on that tackle once again I believe that's his third of the game as the clock ticks down to about 115 here in the first quarter Wurzel lines under center with two receivers and two men in the backfield and Wurzel drops back to pass and Ryan Mink is wide open Ryan Mink nearly breaks the tackle but he gets around the first down marker it's going to be close depends where the ref spots it great throw and catch by Wayne Hills Mink sure his hands on this team he catches the ball he'll bring it to third and one and I'm telling you if that boy hadn't tripped him up that was a perfect call right there by coach Olsen a quick hitch pattern Mink just saw the soft coverage ran out about seven eight yards turned back and the ball was right there with a great pass by Wurzel They're going to bring the measurement out for this one. Doesn't look too close. We but see, I believe Mr. Ruffini is holding one of the uh, yardsticks. Very yearly contributor to this Wayne Hills Patriots team. And it looks like the Patriots are about half a yard short, so it's going to be third and about two feet. Look for them to have a big lead blocker for DeSico and have them run it right up the gut. I don't imagine we're going to see anything besides Zambelli right up the middle. Number 80, John Ein checks into the game. He's a 6'4", over 200-pound kid. He's clearly going to be a blocker for DeSico as they're going to try to run it right up the gut of this Northern Highlands defense. Expect to see a three tight end formation here. Just bunch it up at the line of scrimmage, and that is what we see with one of the tight ends lined up in the backfield. Power eye for Wayne Hills as they've got two feet to go. Also with this formation, looks like they might fake it up the middle and pitch it up top, but that might be a little too tricky on third and a couple inches, and they will pound it up the middle as the Seco is able to bounce it around down there, and he easily gets past the third first down marker. Tough kid showing some smarts there, nothing up the middle, bounces it outside and gets the first down. Tackle. Wayne Hills with a press set of downs at around the 45-yard line of the Highlanders. Second time they've been in the Highlanders territory this game, and Northern Highlands is yet to get into the Wayne Hills side. Wurzel takes a snap and gives it to the Seco once again, who pounds it up the middle for about three yards, and Wayne Hills is determined to get a running game going here tonight. Giving DeSico a lot of touches. This is going to work. This is going to give this team some serious yardage, some offensive production, help them get some points on the board. And number 35, Ryan Green, it looks as it's coming in for Chris Zambelli. Give him a couple, a little bit of a breather here. And that's a give to Ryan Green, who just checked into the game right up the middle for a big gain, but it looks like there might be a penalty to negate the play. Ryan Green on the carry. Looking like holding on that play. I wanted the defensive, offensive lineman, excuse Spencer me, for Johnson Wayne Hills. And that is exactly what it is. is Wayne Hills will Lateral move back a long way, and they're going to have a lot of yards to cover here in two downs. Holding against the Patriots. In fact, that is a 10-yard penalty, I believe. Ten yard penalty and that it is as Wayne Hills will begin at about second and 19 from their own 46.
Elak comes to the line. The rest of the offensive line follows him as Bucci is the split end on the top of your screen. And Wurzel gives it up the middle, the same play it looked like, but this time to number 35, who breaks it for about 10 yards to get back to the line of scrimmage. And that was Ryan Green once again. So Wayne Hill, seeing that it worked once, figured it'll work again, and it did. And it's now going to be third and nine. As that is the end of the first quarter, this game is still scoreless, but Wayne Hills is threatening. Here we are with a head baseball coach. So far, Dave, um, what are your impressions on Coach, what do you think Wayne Hills has to do to win this game? Well, defense, Grant. I think defense is the key. You know, you got to pick up ground balls. you got to turn double plays. you got to make that routine play. And I think once you do that, I think you're in the hunt. Coach, that's not what I asked you, though. Oh, what they need to do is they need to put some points on the board. I think they need to uh, they need to erupt right about now in the second quarter, which I'm sure they're going to do. There you have it, Coach Ionella. <laughs> and right there you saw a sideline interview with our sideline reporter. With sideline reporter Grant Till and Coach Ionello. Has nothing to do with football, but... Ionello, the head coach of the varsity baseball team, who every year comes out strong and performs and usually threatens for a state title. And once again, we see the cheerleaders with their inter-quarter uh, performance. I think they look solid tonight. The cheerleaders? Yeah. Cheerleaders looking good tonight. Hopefully, Wayne Hills will come out and look just as good in the second quarter. Hopefully, as they have third and long to go. I think both teams have a lot to be uh, proven after that first quarter. Some question marks on both sides of the ball, but hopefully first quarter, home opener, the jitters are out, Wayne Hills is ready to put together a strong performance the rest of the way. And Wurzel gives it right up the middle to DeSico, who stumbles at the line of scrimmage, but falls forward for a gain of about five or six, but they're gonna be short and it's gonna be fourth. We'll see if this Wayne Hills team's gonna go for it on fourth and short. And right now we are joined by Cody, whose last name I am unaware of. I'm sure he'll inform you that as we go to him for his views on tonight's game. So far it's been a good defensive game. Neither team can really get anything going. This is Cody Cruschel in the booth. And uh, he's a varsity baseball player for Wayne Hills and member of the Wayne Hills TV unit. And Farina lines up to punt it away, trying to pin the Highlanders deep at their own side of the field. So Farina does get off a good punt, and it takes oh, a Wayne Hills on. bounce, but oh, the coverage team, uh, once again, Romeo slips on the play, had a chance to down it at around the goal line, but maybe had some uh, butterflies going around down there. He slips and lets the ball go into the end zone, so that's going to be a touchback. Young sophomore player, a little jitters, a little shaky tonight. He has two chances now to down that ball inside the five-yard line and, and couldn't connect on either of them. So Farina showing us a little something with his leg tonight. With Wurzel in at quarterback, Farina still able to impress. And the Highlanders line up in I formation as it's a give right up the middle to Rosado, who we've seen a lot of. And that's a huge hit in the backfield by Joji and Papa. There you go. Joji, Joji and Papa, Papa, tough linebacker on this team. And he, he, he's a great player, a junior, well built. Joji and Papa, he's just so quick off the line, and he can get back there and get him for a loss. And that's a big play on first down because now the Highlanders almost forced to have to throw it here. At least one of the next upcoming downs. Second and 10 for the Highlanders. So the Highlanders in a split eye formation with receivers on each side of the field. And there's the snap and there is the pass that we were expecting out to the top of your screen, but a very short tackle by the senior Andrew Bucci to force a long third down. Did you see Bucci on that play? Drops back five yards, has the smarts to know where that play is going and makes the tackle. Great play. Great coverage by all the Wayne Hills defensive backs. He didn't really have anybody open to throw to. So right now, the Highlanders facing a third and seven deep in their own territory. If Wayne Hills is able to stop them here, they're gonna have great field position on the punt. So once again, the Highlanders come out with I formation and twins set out to the left side. 
And there's the snap to the quarterback number three, Joe Torrey. Throws it out to the bottom of your screen, intended for number 15, Frank Lynch. But the pass is incomplete, and they will be forced to punt again. That was a coverage incompletion. Jesse Farina was all over number 15 as he drove him over to the sideline. Quarterback tried to put it as far out in front of his receiver to get it away from Farina. Put it too far in front. Incomplete pass, and it's fourth down. And so far, this game has been your prototypical defensive struggle. And down the sideline, Chaz Lynn is walking up and down the sideline. He's got to have so much going through his mind right now. He was poised for a huge season, but collarbone injury, he's just trying to root his team on as best he can. And Bucci lets the ball go over his head as it rolls around around the 20-yard line. So we thought Wayne Hills would get great field position, but instead they're pinned in their own side of the field. That was some punt by P.J. Pichachi. That was some punt. Twice now we've seen this kid booted far down the field. Patriots going to look to run it again with under 10 minutes to go in the quarter. And in the Patriots huddle, Ryan Green comes in with Nick Wurzel. Coach Olsen must have liked what he saw from Wur from uh, Green on the last possession. I wonder if Zambelli's a little injured because I haven't seen an, an offense in the last five or six plays. He's down there right now with his helmet off. That can't be a good sign for Wayne Hills. Maybe he's just getting a breather. He looks to be favoring that left leg, Zambelli does, as he puts the helmet back on. I think he's going to check back in. He looks okay. So Ryan Green, the sub for Chris Zambelli, gets the carry again, and he powers his way for five yards. So it's going to be second and five as the sophomore Romeo comes into the game. The offensive line seems to be blocking much better today than they did last week against Indian Hills, and that's going to be a key today. They have to establish the run early. They are forming good holes, and the running back is showing great power as they've carried the pile numerous times tonight already. And right there, a fake up the middle of the green, and DeSico gets it. He cuts to the outside and unable to break the tackle with a stiff arm, but still a great run on second down for the first. We saw that play earlier in the game. It was taken back because of some flag, but that is a key play. DeSico with good speed once he can get out to the outside, shakes the defender and is tackled at about the 40-yard line. Like you said, that play has been the bread and butter for the Wayne Hills offense. That was, I believe, the second or third time, and each time they've gained at least 15 yards. And split. No, it's I formation with two wide receivers to the top of your screen. And broken play right there in the backfield as Wayne Hills loses yardage on the play. The offensive line unable to get the uh, push on push off the uh, off the snap, and Green is tackled very quickly for a, for a loss. Now back to that fake up the middle and quick pitch. The reason that works so well is Wayne Hill stacks all the players to one side of the field. So all the players for the Highlanders go to that side and DeSico has a whole entire sideline to work with. It's almost like a fullback option. Play action type maneuver except it's a run where Warzel looks like he's going to hand it off to the fullback and then pitches it quickly outside. Suckers the defense in the middle. As we see the counter right there for DeSico and he put some nifty footwork in there and he gains around eight yards so a big gain on second down there and it's going to be about third and two as opposed to third and ten. How about the Seco? He looks pretty diminutive out there but he is just as tough as anybody out there and he, he keeps gaining yards and he gets a lot of touches because Coach Olsen likes the way he runs. First game as a starter is definitely not looking like it. Looks like he has a lot of experience and he did get some experience when Wayne Hills was defeating opponents by a large margin last year he was able to get into the game and when he came in he looked very impressive a couple times he broke large runs for touchdowns in some of their blowout wins last year and Wurzel fumbles the snap there but gets on top of it uh, loses yards on the play and Olsen is not going to be happy there as they're going to be as the Patriots are going to be forced to punt so this Wayne Hills offense looking very stagnant not being able to produce anything Fourth down and about three from their own 47. They're going to boot this ball downfield. Farina coming in to punt once again, but he has looked very impressive so far. And once again gets off a bomb of a kick. And 34, Rosado fields it. And there's Romeo coming back from a couple poor plays earlier on as he makes a great tackle at around the 10-yard line. Nick Romeo can just fly down the field, and he's the key to their special teams coverage. You've got to remember this kid's only a sophomore. 
and he's already starting on special teams for the Wayne Hills Patriots. I told you, Nick Romeo. I told you, when this kid's a senior, he's going to be something else. Flies downfield, the 4 7 40 speed, and he's able to make the tackle. One of the tougher positions in football is the gunner position on punts and kickoffs as they got to get down the field, usually facing double and triple teams, and they got to down that ball at the goal line and make key tackles, and he's showing the ability to do that tonight. So first and 10 for the Highlanders from their own 13. And Rosado goes to the outside, and the Wayne Hills defender went for the strip and missed, and the Highlanders capitalized on it as they gained about six yards on first. Domicoli dove for Rosado and missed. Walk, got him a little gingerly, but he looks okay. Domicoli, he saw that ball out there. He was holding it like a loaf of bread. He went to strip it and just missed the turnover right there. Domicoli is something else. When this kid walks through the halls, you get out of the way. He is a big mamma jamma. He is very big. He's also one of the anchors on this year's offensive line. The Highlanders with one back in the backfield, and that is Rosado who gets the carry, breaks a few tackles, showing great power, and bounces outside a little. That looks like it might be a first down, but the down no, there won't be a measurement. The official eyeballs it, and that is a first down. Domicoli on that first tackle down, just misses down. getting him to third down and forcing a uh, type of play where you need to get that first down. We are joined tonight by a large section of the Ramapo football we team. Seems to be scouting Wayne Hills. 26. And one of the stories of tonight's game, it looks like these offenses get going, and once they hit the 50-yard line, they just sputter out and can't do anything. Both offense struggling tonight. And Not a good sign. Quarterback, who, number 15, Frank Lynch, is actually a wide receiver on a play earlier in the game, gives the pitch out to the top of your screen, and it's pretty successful, about a four-yard game. Almost looked like a little option play there. Lynch looked like he might have run it, but decided to pitch it back to his running back and let him do the dirty work. Along with Kyle Cavanaugh. Kyle Cavanaugh's name comes up again in the season on the tackle. I think that's his fourth or fifth tackle tonight. Something else, the junior. Tough kid. Got the smarts. Very smart kid in playing, all honors classes. Playing safety this year. As, la as uh, that secondary was depleted last year by graduation with... One of their key players, Monahan, graduating. Monahan, an all-state defensive back, left last year from graduation. Also very vital on um, the offensive side of the ball, where he was a very good quarterback, able to get Olsen the ball on almost every play. And speaking of Olsen, who recently transferred from Notre Dame to Miami to play football, hoping to succeed Jeremy Shockey and Kellen Winslow right there with some very good tight ends. You know, Greg Olson has the, the size, the speed, and the hand, some of the great tight ends at Miami, and I, and I do expect him to do pretty well there. I think right now it's pretty safe to put some money down on it. You're going to be seeing him playing on Sunday somewhere down the line. I agree with that as Rosado breaks a big run. Rosado on the carry. So Rosado able to pick up around nine yards as it's going to be Tackled second and one. Warren. Dave Lurin, a junior, in on the tackle. Said will bring up second and about two for Northern Highlands from their own 45. Second and about two. The Highlanders Northern. come out in an eye-back formation with two wide receivers and one tight end. And there's a snap to number 15, Frank Lynch, to Rosado, I believe. No. Not Rosado, that was number 40. The fullback, Mike Geary, burst up the middle, showing some speed and agility right there, as, long as, as well as power, running over defenders well into the secondary. Looks like this Northern Highlands offense has got something going inside Wayne Hills, on Wayne Hills' side of the field at about the 40 yard line. And as one of the Rampo coaches just said, last year you didn't see anything like that against this Wayne Hills defense. Right now, not really a rebuilding mode, but not as stacked as they have been in past years. Lost a lot, lost a lot of talent to graduation last year. Oh, a big, big hit in the backfield by Domicoli, I believe. He absolutely smoked Rosado, gets through his defensive, gets right by the offensive lineman and just really lays, lays the lumber down. 
no and as the clock play. ticks down, Second nearing three minutes left in this first half, we are still scoreless here at Wayne Hill Stadium with the score 0-0 zero, zero in the Patriots' home opener. The Highlanders break the huddle, and they come out once again in an eye formation with two tight ends to the left as well as a receiver. And number 15 drops back, and there's a fumble on the play. The tackle by, I believe, Bucci and Udi Abilio falls on it, and that is a There's a flag on the play. Hills. There's a flag on the play. How about DeSico comes right in, and wow, he laid a hit down on that Northern Highlands quarterback, costs up the ball, and Abilio comes starting in. starting outside linebacker, came hard on the blitz and absolutely nailed Lynch from his blind side. He didn't see it coming, and the ball just came out, and Abilio was able to fall on it. The Patriots will take over right around the 50-yard line, the 48-yard line of the Highlanders. Orzel drops back to pass. He's looking for Mink on the same play we saw earlier in the game. And the Highlanders are saying he trapped it, but the ref is not going to give him the catch. He did trap it. Mink doesn't look happy with that call, but it looked apparent that he wasn't able to pull that one in. Orzel's throw is a bit low. And Mink dove for it, but was enough to make the catch. Little uncharacteristic of Wurzel there. If he put that ball by the numbers, Mink would have been able to spin to the outside. And who knows, he might have kept running all the way to the goal line. Nick Wurzel's playing a much smarter game today. He's looking for the open receiver, and when he sees him, he's just firing it in there and trying to make things happen. So once again, Wurzel driving back to pass. And he's looking for Green, who was open in the flat. That would have been an easy first down, but Green, little uh, unsureness right there, dropping the pass in the open field. Not the steady hands that Zambelli has, and Green drops it. That ball hits the turf. And once again, you see Zambelli out right now. Really hurts this team. Zambelli, not only a big kid, a great blocker, and a short tackler, also has very good hands. So two Zambelli can get that Zambelli can get that ball on the flat. He has some, got some good wheels. So two minutes thirty-one seconds left on the clock. Scoreless here. Wayne Hills with two timeouts remaining. The Highlanders with three. And the Patriots come out with trips with Mink, Vasico, and Bucci lined to up on the bottom of your screen. And Wurzel will drop back to pass. And Bucci looks open and he is streaking deep. And Wurzel is trying to shake the tackler. And he refuses to go down and his stubbornness costs. Um, little, a big loss actually, not a little loss as well, it's going to be. Lost gonna about, be about 14 yards on that play. And Olsen with his arms out, not happy right there. Asking Wurzel what is going through his mind. Wurzel not happy, slapping his own helmet and walking away with his back to Olsen. And the snap right there over Farina's head. And Farina's going to have to try and run with it, gain some yards back in. This is very sloppy play right here, uncharacteristic of all former Wayne Hills teams. So Northern Highlands gets the ball back with great field position here. So after that fumble forced by DeSego, you would think the momentum would shift to Wayne Hills, but they just give the momentum right back to the Highlanders who have the ball in the red zone with about a minute 50 left in this first half. Olsen telling Farina to punt it. He might have had a little room, but I think Farina did the smart play. It might have been blocked, and for all we know, could have been a touchdown. Olsen not happy, pacing the sidelines. So once again, the carry to number 34, Steve Rosado, right up the middle, good for about nine yards. Mike Deary on the carry. Correct that. That was not Rosado, that was Mike Deary. Clock ticks down to about a minute 30 to go, and Northern Highlands is going to hurry up back to that line, try to get the score in before this half, half clicks two. away. So the Highlanders are going to try to pound it up the middle again, but this time the Wayne Hills Patriots are ready for it. They stop them for about no gain on the play. And the, Highlanders, stuffed. the Highlanders call timeout. They try to get offensive game plan together here. Not going to let this opportunity slip away. Ladies and gentlemen, David Dalmo here was a captain on last year's state championship team. I think everyone here remembers against uh, Mainland Regional when Adamo kicked the winning field goal as time expired for the Wayne Hills Patriots. One of the better games we've ever seen here at Wayne Hills. 
David Damo, also the shortstop last year for the baseball team. He'll be playing college baseball this year. Who will he be play playing baseball for, Cody? Um, I'm not sure. We'll try to find out. Also last year, the Patriots baseball team lost Brendan Monahan, who was a great player, played catcher, and he's also going to play some collegiate ball. He's getting a scholarship to catch at St. John's, good baseball school. Some player went to a Yankees tryout, that Monahan, And he was able to successfully hit it over the left field wall, which is about 314 feet. So the Highlanders break out of their huddle. And Olsen trots back to the sideline hoping his words of wisdom have sunk into his troops' heads. And single back, it, not sure if that was Rosado or not, but he tried to bounce it to the left side, and it, it was Rosado, and he was stopped short. It's going to be fourth and one, and you think the Highlanders will take the points right here or play a little dangerously? If I were the Highlanders, you got less than a minute to go, you let the clock tick down, you take your three points, you go in with the lead. you got to kick the field goal here. You, in a game like this, defensive struggle, still scoreless two. even with about 50 seconds left in the first half. You have to take the points here. For all you we can't know, pass up this Brandon opportunity. Island For all we know, three points could win this game. The way. And the timeout right here, and both teams are going to discuss their strategy Ladies on this critical fourth down. Remember to listen to WGHT 1500 on your AM dial for North Jersey football scores. And the Wayne Hills marching band is getting ready to take the field as both teams are trying and to figure out what they're going to do here. To the football parents. Cody, and the what do you think we're going to see here on this fourth down? Team parents um, I think they're going to kick it. The refreshment stand Dave, I mean you have to get on the board any way you can. Dave? If I were Northern Highlands, I would kick the field goal, but but it looks like that timeout was to discuss some strategy, try to get a first down. Their coach might want six on this drive. I think that might be a little foolish here, but to live dangerously, you can get high rewards. This and is it true. It looks like Rosado is out on the field. High so. risk, provide high rewards. So right now it looks like the Highlanders are going to go for it as Wayne Hills comes out in their 4-4-3 defense. And the Highlanders stack the backfield with three running backs and one receiver. And it's a quarterback option. And number 15, Frank Litz, is going to walk into the end zone with his hands in the air. And the gamble pays off right there as the Highlanders are an extra point away from going up 7 nothing. That was some play. And that is why they had that huddle. They discussed the option. Little quarterback sneak completely fooled the Wayne Hills defense. And the quarterback for Northern Highlands was able to, he could have walked into the end a zone very untouched. very gutsy call right there by the Highlanders. But did you see the block by the wide receiver on the bottom of your screen? I mean, if he doesn't make that block, Bucci definitely tackles him, the quarterback at the line of scrimmage. That was just a great play call. I mean, I think everybody in the stadium was fooled on that. And the extra point is good. And the Highlanders are up 7 nothing with 43 seconds left in this first half. Wayne Hill's looking a little shaky today. The defense was looking strong. Their offense needs to produce a little more. And we'll see what they can do with 43 seconds. They might kneel the ball to go in just down seven. They might try to get three points or seven even. And Olsen talking to his special teams, he definitely needs a big return here because if I know Olsen, he is not going to lay down. He is not going to kneel. He's going to try and score right here with deep passes or runs to the outside because he is a very aggressive coach. You have Nick Warzel as your quarterback who has a very strong arm. You have a few very, very fast receivers, so maybe they'll be able to get something going. Ryan Mink has the possibility for the fade route. He has some great hands and some great vertical leap, and he can get up there and snatch that ball. And also Andrew Bucci, who is the starting split end for this team, can also blaze down the field so you could see Mink and Bucci both going deep for maybe a Hail Mary but first we'll have to see what they do on the return here maybe see a squib kick from the Highlanders who knows so Bucci and DeSico deep for the Patriots to return this kick Bucci and DeSico haven't done much on the return side of the ball. In halftime, which is quickly approaching and us, we will have Grant Hill with a halftime interview down on the sidelines. 
Grant Hill, a new addition to our TV team. Doing a good job down there on the sideline, getting some interesting reports. And number 45, Anthony Fasadi getting ready to kick it down the field. No and squib kick. And this kick is going to be fielded by Vasico around the five-yard line. A very good kick. He comes up the field with a head full of steam, but is tripped up around the 25-yard line, and we will see what the Patriots offense is going to do. A decent run. On the kickoff. Joji and Papa got, got hit, licked pretty good on that play. Got sat down, and that's why DeSico got tackled, because the man that put down Giampapa was then the tackler of DeSico. And the two receivers we were talking about earlier, Bucci and uh, Minker, split out to the left side. And they're just going to give it to Ryan Green up the middle. And it looks like Olsen is content with taking this game into the locker room, being down seven points. And they're going to let the clock run down to 20 seconds. Mike Geary and Brandon Bach on the tackle. 19, 18 as Wurzel runs back onto the field. Of five, second and looks like five. the Patriots will maybe get off one more play, maybe try and break a big run. And with three seconds left, Wurzel hikes it, pitches it out to DeSico. We've seen this play work before, and he breaks to the sideline and gets hit out of bounds at around the 50-yard line. That will be the final play of this first half. So going into halftime, the score is Highlander 7, Hills nothing. Thoughts? Wayne Hills need to produce more on offense. The running game is good, but it seems once they get something going, it just dies out. The Highlanders 7, Patriots nothing. They have to just keep pounding the ball, pounding the ball, hoping to get something going and maybe open up the field deep. I'm kind of surprised here by the play of the Patriots in the first half. Like you said, their offense, it seems like it gets going and then it gets going. And uncharacteristic of most uh, Olsen teams, they just sputter inside the other team's territory. We saw last time they came up with a huge turnover and they gave the ball right back to the Highlanders on a fumbled snap and then a punt way over the head of the punter, Jesse Farina. You have to give credit to the Northern Highlands defense, though. I mean, they're stepping up when they need to step up. They're making the big plays. The Highlanders came in here. They weren't intimidated at all. They came right at the Patriots defense, ran up the middle, tried to pound it away, and that ended up proving key as on that critical fourth down, the Patriots were looking for a run up the middle. They faked it up the middle, and the quarterback was able to walk into the end zone. And we should let everybody know that this is not the Wayne Hills team of the past. Not make the same talent level, low. but this team might have more heart than anybody. And Look for them to make a strong team. comeback in the second half. You could easily say the Patriots, the while they've lost talent, you're going to expect them to be rebuilding a few Katie years. But Macro. the Wayne Hills Patriots don't and usually re rebuild. They reload with talent as usually freshmen through seniors. Oh they have God, solid Captain players Captain coming through this system, Torino. and they just develop them. But right now, it's not showing tonight. Seems like a little break in that pattern, but there are still some great young players. Nick Romeo to be one of them. We've said his name a bunch of times. And a lot of juniors on this team that are playing well. They'll be seniors next year. This team will be better next year. But what's important right now is this year. And they need to play better if they want to have productive 2003 season. Pete DeSico, one of those juniors, has been impressive so far in this game. He's broken a few big runs. He's shown power, quickness, speed, agility, everything you want in your side running back. But without some help from his quarterback in line, they're not really going to do anything. And we are still waiting for a silent injury with Trent Hill. Not quite sure what he's doing down there. What is he doing down there? <laughs> Who knows? It looks like he's not actually looking for a silent interview. He is talking to the ladies down there. So I guess he's more of a uh, ladies' man than a sideline reporter right now. But we're up here. We're in the cold. We're on the cold, hard bleachers, and we're doing our job. And scratch that sideline interview. We are going to send it down to the field where you will see first Northern Highlands band and then the Wayne Hills Patriots band.
Here we are with athletic director, oh, no, Mr. Askles. No, 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 now, Mr. Askles, out of all your... And contrary to what I was informed of before, we are going to go down to the sideline with Grant Hill, who has a sideline interview at halftime. Joe Ascalese. Now, Mr. Ascalese, out of all your experience, how do you get to come through in the next half and win the game? Well, you just got to go ahead and believe in the coaching staff, uh, stay with your uh, game plan, and just execute. So there you have it, Dave and Justin. Back to you. And we are done with the interview, and we are now going to watch the band perform.
Ladies and gentlemen, let us return that salute with an appropriate round of applause. The Highlands Regiment. Ladies and gentlemen, we now introduce the Wayne Hills High School Patriot Marching Band. Drum majors Braden Delaunay and David Simon. Guard captains Amy Cedro, Via Galera, and Amanda Mascaro. Drum Captain Brian Kugel, President John Sama, Vice President Jeff Petriello, Publicity Officer Jessica Spear, Recruiting Officer, Publicity Officer Cynthia Leach, Recruiting Officer Stephen Barbera and Daniel Pigos. Equipment Managers, Andrew Morris, Jonathan Wang, Julia Mills, David Ortiz, and Katie Sullivan. The Shield Repertoire, Declarations of Freedom, Overture, I Dreamed a Dream, Master of the House, on my own, and do you hear the people sing? The Patriot Marching Band 2002 Achievement, Superior Rating, Charleston, South Carolina, first place, Group 2 EMBA Championship, New Jersey State Champions, EMBA, Superior rating, NJEM, correction, NJMEA State Marching Band Festival. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wayne Hills Patriot Marching Band.
ladies and gentlemen, again, let's return that salute with an appropriate round of applause for the Wayville Patriots marching band.
listening to Lord Jersey 1500 WGHG on Saturday afternoon, the high school game of the week. You can also get all North Jersey high school football scores. Again, WGHG 1500 on your AM dial. And we are back after both bands are off the field. You know, we had a little downpour during the halftime, but the bands did not leave the field. They persevered through some hardcore band action right there. Those guys are tough. Meanwhile, the fans poured out of here, all about 50 of them. No, just about uh, 200. A good, a good showing tonight, maybe around 150 people, rough estimate. They flooded out of these stands like no one's business. And uh, about one minute later, they came flooding back in. Wayne Hill's looking to rebound after a decent first half. I mean, offense struggled, defense proved to be a, a, a bit stronger than they were last week. We'll see what they can do in the second half. From our viewpoint, the Wayne Hills Patriots look decent. From, from the eyes of Coach Olson, though, that was a complete failure down at halftime. Never want to see that from one of your teams. So the captains will walk out to the middle of the field just as they did before the kickoff. Abucci, Domicoli, Zambelli, and Lynn will meet the Highlanders captains at midfield. The Patriots are going to receive the kickoff as they deferred in the first quarter, first half. Jesse Farina warming up. Looks like he's going to be playing quarterback in this second half. Warming up with Zach Mink, sophomore wide receiver, brother of Ryan Mink, the varsity senior. DeSico and Bucci back to receive. Bucci and DeSico are deep to return the kickoff. And the Highlanders kicker, um, I do believe it's Piacci. And on the sideline, it looks like Jesse Farina is warming up, so we might see a change of quarterback. I don't know what Coach Olsen might have seen wrong in Wurzel. They only passed about maybe four times, but... You know, you're down at halftime. Very good team down at halftime, actually, and maybe quarterback could be the answer. And here is the opening kickoff of the second half. The ball is fumbled, but eventually picked up by Bucci, and he jukes one tackler and gets out to the 20-yard line. Bucci on the kickoff return. Brought down by Which is where Wurzel. it looks like Wurzel is still the quarterback, but Farina just getting warmed up in case... Olsen feels like a change needs to be made. So it'll be the Patriots ball to start the second half at their own 21. Warzel runs out into the huddle. Don't really expect the uh, game plan to have changed much in halftime. Still expect the Patriots to run up the middle, run up the middle. Maybe a couple play action passes here or there, but the Seacoast still going to be the go-to guy. They're going to need to pound away. They might try another drive with Ryan Mink scoring a touchdown just like they did last week. 
And there, no, it's not the Seagull, it's Bucci on the reverse. But number 40 for the Highlanders, which would be Mike Geary, with a very, very solid tackle. He wrapped Bucci up and took him down to the ground. Bucci just couldn't seem to turn the corner there. I mean, if he did, he probably has another 20 or 30 yards. It's just great defense by the Highlanders. It looked like Bucci had a hole right there that would have been good for about 25, 30 yards, maybe even more. But Geary filled the hole beautifully and made the stop in the backfield for a loss of one. So the Patriots come out in a nine formation. Two wide receivers split out. And DeSico will get the toss to the bottom of your screen. Stiff arms one tackler, but then gang tackled at the sideline, led by number 80, the defensive end, Brennan Woods. This Highlanders defense has come out firing. Hills can't get anything off recently. A couple runs that were pretty much shut down, and it's third and long. So with one minute gone in this second half, different half, same story, Wayne Hills sputtering on offense. And the Patriots come out, once again, in the I formation, pretty much their bread and butter formation. But this time, no tight end, three wide receivers, two to the bottom of your screen, one up top. And Wurzel will drop back the pass. He's looking to the sideline for Mink, who is wide open. A great pattern, great pass, equates into a first down Patriots. Wurzel's pass is complete to Ryan Mink. Second down, Patriots. That was just a well-developed play there. I mean, Warzel waited for the Back receiver to get open and hit him. Nick Warzel, great delivery on that ball, and Mink, the surest hands on the First team, down, takes it down. Yeah. He's got a few receptions tonight. So it looks like the Patriots' offense is finally starting to get something going. Handoff up the middle to DeSico, and he is brought DeSico down after a carry. short game. Mike West on the tackle. So after a very short gain on first down, uh, it's going to be second and nine. Second and nine. So Wayne Hills comes out in the I formation again. And Wurzel drops back to pass, and Mink was open, but just missed him. It's going to be third down. Well, it's good to see the Patriots coming out firing here in the second half, trying to get something going. Wurzel looks good back there, and it's just a matter of time before they start putting some points on the board. And Wurzel comes back to the huddle. Looks like he has the play, and Gilak leads the line to the line of scrimmage. And the wide receivers this time, Romeo, the sophomore, and Bucci and Mink on the top of your screen. Wurzel will drop back to pass. He looks to the left side, and he had Mink, but overthrew him as the ball sails down the field. And fourth down will come up once again for the Wayne Hills Patriots, and Jesse Farina will enter the game. Olsen clearly unhappy. You got to hate it when the perfect play call is broken off by poor execution. Wurzel had Mink overthrew him, and now it's fourth down and a punting situation for Hills. If you had to call anything tonight so far, a bright spot for the Patriots, you would have to say it's Jesse Farina's punting. And he gets off another good one, this time a line drive though, but the Patriots are there to cover it. Highlander smartly back away, and four Patriots will gather around the ball as Gian Papa downs it at around the 30. And the Highlanders come back onto the field, led by quarterback number 15, Frank Lynch, who has the lone score in tonight's game. Highlanders, Lynch under center, drops back to pass, rolling out to his right. And he's looking deep, but instead fires it down the middle of the field. Hits a couple of Patriots' hands, one of them notably Chris Zambelli. Zambelli, great coverage. The inside linebacker moves around, sees the ball, deflects it, and breaks up the play. The 
Patriots come out in their typical 4-4-3 defense with Bucci and Mink, the two cornerbacks. And Lynch gets ready to hike it. And he fakes the handoff up the middle, but gives it to the tailback, Rosado, who had a solid early going, but we haven't heard his name much since then. And successfully picks up around eight yards, and it's going to be third and short. Rosado, strong and tough and fast, gets breaks some tackles, gets eight yards. Just never stop moving his legs, and that's the key to being a running back. You have to just keep the legs moving and pick up yardage. You see those great NFL running backs every Sunday, Ricky Williams, LaDainian Tomlinson, Priest Holmes, everyone, Clinton Portis. They always finish off runs by driving their legs and carrying defenders and picking up the extra yards. Because later in the game, if you know your running back's going to do that, defenders are going to back out of the way. They're going to be scared to touch them. And we're going to have a measurement. The Patriots are going to be well short. Maybe strategy right there by the Patriots asking for the measurement. Sort of like an unofficial timeout. So the Patriots will be about a foot short. Islands will be about a foot short of a first down. Patriots are on defense. And after the measurement, the officials have spotted the ball about a foot short of the first down. And the Highlanders will approach the line with only inches needed to gain this first down. Hills is going to load the box to try to... They have about nine players in the box right now with Bucci coming up from his cornerback position as an outside linebacker and Mink, the lone cornerback, and Cavanaugh deep as a safety. The ref blows his whistle as play will resume. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. Let's see if Highland tries to draw Hills offside. It's number three in motion to the left, and Wayne Hills with great penetration as Lynch tried to sneak it up the middle, and it looks like they might be short. And there was a fumble was on the play. There was a fumble on the play, and the Patriots have recovered it. It looks like at the bottom of the pile was Adi Abilio. If so, that would be his second recovery on the day. And hopefully this time the Patriots will be able to capitalize on the turnover. That could be the spark that the Patriots need to get something going. The team is fired up now. Let's see if they can get a scoring drive going on this, on this next set of downs. And the Patriots offense has been unable to carry themselves into Highlanders territory much this game. The defense does it for them. And let's see if Wurzel and the rest of the offense can capitalize. And right off the bat, they give it to Green, who bursts up the middle, driving his legs for a first down about 12 yards. And the crowd is really getting into it now. Tough kid. Keeps his legs driving, runs over people, breaks tackles, gains yards. The typical and fullback. The starting fullback, Chris Zambelli, is still out, and Green is really stepping up his game. Zambelli just playing the defensive side of the ball now, it seems. Green really playing well. A little unsure on the hands part of the game, but Wurzel still gives doing it to well. Seiko right at the middle. Good for five yards, but it looks like there was a holding penalty. And not sure if there was a penalty right there. Flag on the play. And yes, there is a penalty, and the Patriots are going to be backed up 10 yards. Holding against the Patriots. So that'll make it first and 20 for the Patriots. Long way to go. Expect them to pass. Wurzel comes in with the play. Maybe looking for Mink. Sophomore Nick Romeo's in on the play. They're the receivers are talking. I think it's a pass play. So it's about first and 15. Must have been offsides right there because that would be your five-yard penalty. And, and Wurzel doesn't look like he doesn't like what he sees at the offensive line. He's going to call a timeout and have the coach talk about it. So. This is not the first time we've seen this. The Patriots get a key turnover, and then the offense with some um, careless, I guess you could say, boneheaded whatever plays right now. The first time it was a fumbled snap, and then a, the uh, long snapper snapped it over Farina's head on the punt, and right now we see an offsides penalty. If you find that you are missing said pair, come up and see us. And my co-commentators are speechless as we take a look at the uh, offensive and defensive huddles. 
timeout. Hills, first and 20, eight minutes to go, down seven, looking for a touchdown. Need to throw a pass here. I, in my opinion, they need to they need to go to the air, go to Mink, let him get under the ball, throw it up in the air, let, let the jump ball, because he's got a great vertical. You let him jump for that ball, he'll take it down, and you'll be you'll be closer. You'll have the first down, fresh set of downs, and you'll be inside the red zone. I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a play action here because Warzo with a good arm. They've been pounding the ball, so maybe the Highlanders won't really expect it. So after the timeout, the Patriots will come to the line of scrimmage with a single back and trips left. And Wurzel will fake the handoff, and he's looking deep. He's got Abilio wide open, but he leads him a little too much. Udi, though, with a great diving attempt at the 20-yard line off his fingertips. And that is one of the aspects of the Patriots will miss Greg Olson very badly. Even if Monaghan was unable to throw it right in the numbers, Olson had spectacular hands. Cody, you called it play action on the play, but poor execution. Again, a perfect play call. Poor execution, and now it's second and 20. Long way to go. But go to the air again, I am... I'm pretty sure. Northern so Highlands with three defenses. So this time it's a single back. So Ryan Green to the backfield, who has had a solid game so far. And the running back split out to the flats, but Wurzel looks over the middle to Mink. Not sure what they were trying to do there. Mink was at around the line of scrimmage when the pass hit him in the hands. And Olsen, also kind of clueless. He's shrugging his shoulders down there. Not sure what Wurzel saw on the defense right there. Third and 17, 7.55 to go in the third quarter. Warzel completionless on this drive. And Adi Abilia, who we mentioned before, the incomplete pass attended to, has come off the field as well as DeSico. So they are going with four wide receivers and a running back here, definitely looking to air it out down the field. So Warzel will drop back, good protection. He's looking deep, he has a man, and it's incomplete off the receiver's fingertips. That was number 24. Uh, Cody, who would that be? Number Dan, Chang. Be Dan Chang. Dan Chang, the Chang. senior wide receiver. Right off his fingertips. He was open. The pass was a little high, but opportunity missed as Farina will come in yet again to punt it away. And Wayne Hill's unsuccessful on offense. Can you believe this? From last year's offense to this year's offense, totally different story. They are not the same team. They're struggling. They need to try to get something done. And Farina with another solid pump, but this one's going to go into the end zone for a touchback as it rolls out of the back of the end zone. 40-yard punt. Quality Farina doing well in the special team segment of the game. Farina would have liked to maybe hit a coffin corner punt, nail him at the goal line, or kind of sky it down there, let his, his uh, gunners get under it. But touchback's better than a return because you never know what the other team's going to do on a return. They could break it loose for a big game, maybe even a touchdown. Wayne Hills had that to, had that done to them last week against Indian Hills. Struggled in the special teams portion of the game. They let up one return for a touchdown and another down to around the 10-yard line. Nothing the defense could do with that. And Lynch hands it off to Rosado up the middle as he spins and bobs and weaves his way through the line of scrimmage for about, Rizzotto looks like, four yards. Rosado, a tough kid, doing well tonight. But both defense look tough. Tackle. New Orleans has two fumbles tonight. Let's see if they can cough the ball up again. Wayne Hills, yet to commit a turnover. The Highlanders come at the line of scrimmage with Lynch on their center. He motions number three through the line of scrimmage, and here comes Rosado with a head full of steam, trying to power his way through, breaks a few tackles, bumps off a couple defenders, Rosado and when it's all said and done, he has around a four or five yard gain. It's going to be third and short. In the Wayne Hills Patriots Holy. defense, you look at the scoreboard, they only gave up seven points, but they keep hurting themselves. It seems like every time they're in a third and short situation, but right here, the Highlanders able to do it on two downs as they pick up the first. Rosado just tireless out there today. He keeps pounding the ball. He must have 20 carries tonight. 
And Rosado trying to look for a hold of the outside, unsuccessful, as he is gang tackled at the line of scrimmage by it looks like four Wayne Hills defenders led by Ryan Green and Joe G and Papa. Number 50, Justin Juven, also in on the tackle, a sophomore, another young, talented player. Him and Romeo, when they're seniors, this team is going to be one solid program. Rosado on the carry, Ryan Green on the tackle. And, but there was a holding penalty on the play. So, the Highlanders are going to be backed up. I think holding is a 10 yard penalty. And, yes, it is. Second and first and 20. On the play, holding against Northern Highland. So, the Highlanders taking a page out of the Patriots playbook right there with a the holding penalty <laughs> going first and 20. Highlanders, though, coming out, looking like they're going to run with the tight end and two backs in the backfield. But no, they drop back to pass. He's got a receiver in the flat with a great diving catch by number three, Joe Torrey. Joe Torrey, the Yankee manager, coming out for Northern Highlands and makes a nice catch in the flat, and it'll be second and about 13. Actually, Joe Torrey was playing a quarterback to start the game, and Lynch was receiver. It looks like they're switching it up now with Lynch on their center and Torrey playing a little split end. So a very versatile team being displayed by the Second Highlanders. And, about 12. and Wayne Hills breaks the huddle, and the Highlanders subsequently break theirs. Wayne Hills looks to have a big stop. They're going to need it. About five minutes left in the third quarter. Corey goes in motion, and it looks like Ryan Green and the defensive end for the Patriots collide on the quarterback. That would be Adi Abilio, who we mentioned earlier with great speed off the side, getting the sack. And that was Brian Pagan and on Brian the tackle, Pagan. along with Abilo. Good speed off the line as he came in and sacked Lynch. So the outside linebacker and the defensive end colliding on both sides, sandwiching the quarterback for a big loss. And right now, on top of the holding penalty, it's going to be third and 22. Maybe the offense looking to play a conservative, not throwing an interception, just going to run it up the middle and set up the punt. Hills looking to get the ball back and go for another drive, see if they can make something happen unsuccessful to this point. And a pitch to the top of your screen, and they do play a conservative, but Rosado is just leveled in the backfield by five Wayne Hills defenders, once again led by Adi Abila and Brian Pagan and Dave Lauren, a host of tacklers on the play. And Zambelli in on the tackle. And Chris Zambelli. The list just keeps piling fourth on. And 22. So it's going to be fourth and 22. And Bucci and DeSico. No, and not, not, Kyle not Bucci. Kyle returns. Cavanaugh and DeSico will go back. The so two juniors punt. returning the punt. A lot not of sure young talent Bu on this team. Not sure where Bucci is on this play. Usually a return man. Oh, and nearly blocked. The punter falls to the ground looking for a roughing the punter play, but he's not going to get it. And the punt goes out of bounds at the Highlanders' 47. So once again, a golden opportunity for Wayne Hills to tie this game up. How about Pagan? Great speed off the line. Again, nearly blocks the punt. Good player. Good player. 48-yard line. I correct that. The ball is spotted at the Hills' 48-yard line, not the Highlanders. But still a golden opportunity for Wayne Hills. They desperately need to score here with the clock approaching three minutes here in the third quarter, and they are still being blanked by this stellar Highlanders defense. And so the handoff to the Seco up the middle, and he runs over the defender and falls down at the same time, so that's going to be about two yards on first down. DeSico got a talking to on the way back to the locker room. Olsen clearly upset. Not sure why. DeSico playing pretty well today. A lot of carries. A lot of yards. DeSico, playing tough. DeSico, if he's not quite there yet, approaching 20 carries. And he is they just carrying this offensive team. Seven. Although they're not putting points up, he's definitely racking up the yards, but he can't do it himself. And Wurzel will drop back on a quick three-step drop to Mink on the sideline, who cuts back in, trying to get the first down, and the second and third effort might have gotten it for him. I like this kid, Mink. He's tough. Great hands. Great hands. They need to throw the ball to him more. Mink's having a very strong performance tonight. He has three or four catches, I think, clearly Wurzel's primary receiver. 
So they'll move the change as the refs spot the ball. Good spot for the Patriots. Hills in the huddle. And the Coleman clock. Coming out to his team, gonna have a little talking. The clock is stopped as the chain gang, led by Mr. Ruffini, one of the chemistry teachers here at Wayne Hills High School, comes out to measure the, pl the uh, spot on the field, see if it's a first down. A decent gathering for tonight's game. Hundreds of people herding into Patriot Stadium. And as we look across the field, a lot of Highlanders fans actually. The visitors' bleachers are filled better than the home bleachers. And they are enjoying this game, I bet. Their Highlanders up 7 nothing with only three minutes ago in the third quarter. And they're doing a great job on defense. This Wayne Hills offense has done nothing. Every time it seems they're going to come onto the scoreboard, they have a careless turnover or penalty or some type of mental blunder that sets them back. And Farina comes onto the field for yet another punt. But right now, Wurzel leads his offensive unit onto the field. After that was a first down. Play action rolling out to his left. He's hit as he thrown. It's underthrown. It's going to be picked as the receiver fell down. And once again, the Wayne Hills Patriots squander a perfect opportunity to tie this game up. Valiant effort by Nick Warzel to avoid the blitz, but there was three or four Northern Highlands defenders right in his face, and there's only so much he can do. Always a tough play for the quarterback, rolling out to his weak side. He had to turn his body to the play, which wastes valuable time as the rushers got to him very quickly and got hit. Two things. I don't like the call, rolling out opposite of his throwing arm. And the second thing, I don't like the throw. Men on him, you tuck that ball away. He was going to have to throw First about 40 yards ball without ball. his shoulders squared. You can't do that at the high school level. Guys are just going to pick that ball off. So the Highlanders come back on the field playing conservatively. It looks like they're happy with the 7 nothing lead. They're just going to keep running the ball, and hopefully their defense will come up strong and keep stopping the Patriots. And we'll take this little break between plays to give some props up to our camera staff up there, headed by Alexander Rahm, one of the seniors here at Wayne Hills. Rahm, a TV4 independent study student and cross-country athlete, has headed up this TV club camera crew for two years now. So uh, as you see on the bottom of your screen, it's second and eight. And the Highlanders once again going for the run. And Rosado is just nailed by Kavanaugh on the bottom of your screen, the left sideline. But it's still a good gain, and a late flag comes in. I don't know what they're going to call here, but most likely a personal foul against the Patriots, which would just be devastating right now. And it is. It's a late hit personal foul on the Patriots. Not sure where that came. Kavanaugh with a clean hit. His helmet right into the shoulder pad of the carrier. Maybe Ryan Mink or someone came in late on the play. Not quite sure. But either way, the penalty is on the Patriots. And that is going to move the ball forward 15 yards. Kavanaugh is a tough, tough kid. He just saw the play. His linebackers were beat. He ran up there, put down the lumber. So Coach Olsen still not happy with the call by the refs as he's lobbying. But to no avail. Rosado gets popped, but he's he's gotten popped several times tonight. He just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. This kid does not stop moving his legs. He's tough. He's gaining yards, and he's killing the clock. So the new spotting is at the Highlanders' own 44-yard line. And the clock ticks down to about 145 remaining in the third quarter, and Hills, surprisingly, is still blanked. Lynch takes the snap and he gives it to his fullback this time who runs into the referee <laughs> so the referee maybe the 12th man on the field right there Hills gets some help as the field judge some gets well in the way help too. some well needed help he that the uh, Northern Highlanders runner could have broken it for a long way had the referee not gotten in his path gain of four second and six so Dave Lauren will check back in on defense for the Patriots. Lauren, strong kid. He squats well over 400 pounds. You should see this kid squat. Yeah, when, when he, he squats, squats, the bar is bending over his back. 
He's a big kid. He's the type of size you want in a defensive end at the pro level, too. Someone to just clog the holes, take on the double teams, let the linebackers do the dirty work. And he's doing well tonight. His legs, his strong legs, he's powering right through the line. He's got several tackles tonight. And you see right there, doing his job, taking on the double team, letting the linebackers take, finish off the job as Domicoli, a fellow defensive tackle, also went on the, ta on the play with Zambelli. And the quarterback, Lynch, will come into the huddle with the offensive play here on third and six. A critical third down. Because if the Highlanders are able to pick this up, they're going to go into the fourth quarter with the ball and the momentum still on their side. So third and seven for the Highlanders as Lynch takes a snap. Looks like it's an option, and it is. This is Otto Cecily fields it, and he bursts through the hole but uh, is short of the first down, and that will take us into the fourth quarter as the Patriots are still down seven to nothing, but we'll be getting the ball to start the fourth quarter. Patriots down seven nothing, gonna start with that 12 minutes of the fourth quarter with the ball, as Northern Highlands should punt the ball at fourth and three. Cody, Cody, what does this Patriots team need to do to get on the board in this final stanza? First, they have to put a couple of plays together have to get something going it's they've been getting good gains on the ground and then just turning it over sloppy play sloppy play sloppy plays tonight but I still think despite Worlds' interception despite Worlds' interception they should still continue throwing the ball they're having way more success throwing the ball to Mink Wells just needs to make better decisions when he throws the ball, avoid the interceptions, get the consecutive completions going. Mink's got to get some more touches on the ball. And as you just saw, the Wayne Hills Patriots cheerleaders on your screen, no matter what the score is in this game, they always have faith in their players. And right now, I'm sure they think they're going to pull it out, as, so we, as do we up here in the booth. The Patriots have successfully established the run today. You gotta imagine maybe they'll use that to their advantage with a couple play action passes. Wurzel has gotta hit one of his receivers on the money eventually. Kavanaugh so, back deep in Bucci's place again. And once again, Pagan nearly blocking the kick, but instead it will go way up into the lights and bounce out of bounds. Actually, no, it will be fielded right before the 20 yard line. And that is where the Patriots will start with the ball to begin the fourth quarter, desperately needing a score. Even a field goal would be helpful right here. Yeah, they just need something to maybe First change the momentum of this game. On the 18. So here comes the Wayne Hills Patriots to the line. And the Highlanders in their base 4-3, not 4-4 defense. And DeSico is the lone. No, he, it is an I formation with Ryan Green in the backfield. And Wurzel steps back. He gives it to Mink on the screen pass, looking for room to run. But a great tackle in the backfield by the cornerback, not allowing Mink to break that into the open field where he is very dangerous. Mink shut down. What I don't understand about this pass is Mink does not have blazing speed. He's got the jump. You throw the face to him. You throw down the field with Mink. You don't throw those screens. The screens are for Bucci. Very surprising right there, though, that they didn't come out with a running play because they have been just pounding it and pounding it all game. you got to imagine this Highlanders defense is going to get tired and give a big play eventually. And right here they were looking for the run. Right up the middle again, the Seco spinning away from a few tacklers and it will be about third and five. So right here, a must convert for the Wayne Hills Patriots as their chances are slowly slipping away as the clock ticks down to 11 minutes. Third and five, if I'm Coach Chris Olsen, Worzel has some legs, you play action pass, you let him roll out, you have him dive for that, dive for the stick, get the first down, get a new, new fresh set, and see what you can do. Quarterback option would definitely seem like a smart play here. Fake it up the middle. Roll out to his strong side this time, to his right, so his shoulders are already squared for the receiver. If he doesn't see anyone open, just jettison for that first down marker. And that is what he's doing. He is rolling out to his strong side, and he's got a receiver. It's Adi Abilo, and he is in the open field, and he is going down the sideline to the 40, all the way down to the 32-yard line. And this crowd and the team, the cheerleaders, everyone is ecstatic after that play. What a play! 
Schwartzel did exactly what I said. It rolls out to his strong side, delivers the ball to Abilo. A good pass, a great game. Once again, Schwartzel rolls out, and I'm not sure exactly who it was, but somebody made the block that gave Warzel that extra second that he needed. Great right, play. Right there, just what the doctor ordered. Adi Abilo, a very big kid. You don't expect speed out of him, but he broke a tackle, and he was like a kid shot out of a cannon running down that sideline. The Patriots with newfound life in the Highlanders' territory as Wurzel will take the snap and give it to Green up the middle, who is stopped for about four yards, a decent gain on first down. And so Abilo shows some uh, resemblance to Olsen on that, catching the ball and getting some great yards after the catch. Got to give us some credit up here, too. We called that play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think if Olsen saw the same thing, too. The last possession, you know, Wurzel rolled out to his weak side. Took him some time to square up his shoulders. Got his he through and under through it by a mile. This time they convert. Maybe Coach Lehman heard us up here. Relayed the play down to Mr. Olsen. And here's Wurzel with the pass to Bucci. He spins and he is going to go into the end zone for the touchdown. And the Patriots are on the touchdown, board. Touchdown, Patriots! The they have just tied this game. And the crowd is going crazy. That was a great, great play call and perfect execution. Warzel, the three-step drop back, delivers it to Bucci. The defender slips. He scampers for the pylon, gets the touchdown. Great play. In the words of Brent Musburger, that was a whale of a play, my friend. A whale of a play. Andrew Bucci, just with blazing speed, he turned it on and slid into the corner of the end zone and got in. He caught that pass. You knew he was going to score. He was too quick and too smart of a player to be denied of a touchdown opportunity like that. And Bucci comes and back on and drills it through the uprights. And this is a whole new game with 9.30 left in the fourth quarter. It is 7-7. Seven to seven. And the fans is loving it. They are jumping up and down. We have a brand new game under 10 minutes. Tie ball game. This is what you live for in high school football. Just a minute ago, this crowd was dead silent. They were sulking. This game looked all but over with the offense not being able to get anything going all game. And... What do you know it? One minute later, they are back in this. And I like this play, and I, I like this play. They're passing the ball. They're doing exactly what I said they should before the half started. They need to pass the ball, get the touches to Mink, to Bucci, run this ball down the field. And you know what? I like their chances with less than 10 minutes to go in this game. They've got the mo factor. They've got the momentum. And also, this defense has looked extremely solid all game long. The only score they gave up is when they were put in a horrible position in their own red zone. Nothing you can really do there. Yeah, you can't really say enough about the Patriots' defense tonight. I mean, they've been tough. They haven't given up any big plays. And, I mean, if they keep doing that, it should be the Patriots' game to win. And for the home opener, I don't think you can ask for any better of a game. As the Highlanders field it at their own five, and he comes up to just... Past the 20 yard, no, that was actually the 15 yard line. So the Highlanders deep in their own territory to start this drive. Momentum clearly with the Patriots at this point. I like their chances. Maybe they can open up this scoring. I don't think Coach Jesus' defense is going to give up any points right here. They have been solid all game long. Nothing's going to change here. Ziza prepares his players very well throughout the week, as well as Coach Olsen. If if you have to say one thing about this team, it's that they're always prepared. They always know what they're going to be able to do in every situation. They always know what they're doing. They have the game plan set. And you know what? Aside from one trick play, they have been absolutely perfect this defense. And once again, three Patriot defenders in on the play to stop it for about a one-yard gain. Mike Theory on the carry. So they go away from Rosado this time to Mike Theory, who only gains one yard. And the captain, Chris Zambelli, able to make yet another tackle. The force in the middle, the Brian Erlacher of this Wayne Hills defense. Zambelli, a tough kid, making lots of tackles tonight. I like that analogy, Mr. Rubino. And the Highlanders come out with twins on the bottom of your screen. And they're going to pass, and they're going over the middle, and it is picked off by Kyle Cavanaugh. What a pick. He brought that off the turf with his fingertips. A diving effort, and the Patriots are back in business. This kid has been superb all night. Tackles, deflections, now a diving interception. The momentum's with Wayne Hill. Let's see what they do. Four fresh new downs. 
Kyle Cavanaugh has just been all over the field tonight, and that might be the biggest play of the game. And Chaz Lynn is jumping for joy on the sideline. He is loving this. Eight and a half minutes to go. Warzel steps back on the field, delivers a touchdown pass on his last drive. Let's see what he does here. See if the Seagull can maybe break a big run. If the Seagull could break a run here and get in the end zone, this crowd would just erupt. And they're going to try it, and the Seagull will go up the middle. Just tripped up six yards away from those line of scrimmage. Dives forward for an extra two. It's second and two. Can you believe the momentum? Do you hear the crowd? Everybody here very excited. Wayne Hill starting to put a play, put, put a game together here. DeSico getting the ball and having a nice tough run, diving over the pile. The Northern Highlands stands are just completely silent now. All the momentum of this game has shifted to the Patriots. And Bucci split out to the bottom of your screen. Mink on the top. Wurzel under center and gives it up the middle to Ryan Green who's got room to work with. He's at the five. He is in He's the, into end, the zone. end zone. Touchdown, Touchdown Wayne Hills. Touchdown Hills. Ryan Green. Tough. And Mountain that, my friend, defenders. gives the Patriots a 13-7 lead. Barring the extra point, they are up a touchdown. And they are going crazy on the Patriots' sideline. In fact, they actually just flipped the net that the kickers practice into. The Insane. Cow bells are ringing. The cheerleaders are loving it. And I don't think the Rampo team likes it very much, though. Bushy to kick. In about two minutes, this game has completely been flipped around. From Hills down seven to now up seven. And Bucci, a very solid kicker, gets it through the uprights with room to spare. And the Patriots are now up seven. And I don't think they're going to suffer this. Remember the play. This. Remember the play that set that up. Kavanaugh with the interception. And you know what? The run is going to start to work now because this Highlanders defense is off, is awfully tired. Two plays, two runs, one touchdown, one lead for the Wayne Hills Patriots. Ravino, you just spit on me. I think that was rain. It's starting to drizzle again, my friend. Oh. Nice save, Justin. What's save? come out and they're kicking formation with Mink, Kavanaugh, and Bucci on the bottom of your screen. They're three very fast, speedy, hard hitters looking to get down the field and make a play. And the kick will go through the end zone, it looks like, for a touchback. But I think it was off sides there on that kickoff, the flag towards where the Patriots lined up. Going to move them back five, ten yards, flag and they'll re-kick the it. Off sides against the Patriots. Dave, have you ever seen momentum shift and this quickly in a matter of just two minutes? In fact, I have. Against Mainland Regional last year, Wayne Hills did a similar thing, but it was even a greater momentum shift as they came down from the about Patriots 14 points and flipped it completely around, yard and yard. you've never heard a crowd erupt like they did when Adamo split the uprights as the clock wound down. Yeah, just in the past 10 minutes, I mean, all the momentum of shift has shifted. You the can Pat feel the Wayne Hill sidelines buzzing. It is electric. The Patriots looked like they had one foot in the grave, but they were able to take that one out and put it right on the chest of the Highlanders. <laughs> but the Highlanders right here with a big return, and they get it past the 50-yard line, but it looked like Bucci was able to bring them down. And that momentum we're talking about, very critical, maybe shifting back to the Highlanders, but the Patriots defense is still going to come out fired up, and it's going to be hard to score on them right now. Hard to score on this Patriots defense right now. Rosado, resilient. The endurance on this kid, he never gets tired. This kid has been carrying the offensive load for the uh, Highlanders all game, and right there you saw a very explosive return by him too. And it's starting to rain a little bit harder here, but still nothing to... Didn't I say there was rain? I said there was rain. There's rain. No, you spit on me. Get him. And Rosado once again with the carry for about two, maybe three yards. The 
and Damacoli in on the tackle. Damacoli, the big mamma jamma that you referred to earlier with the big stop at the line of scrimmage. When he walks through the halls, you get out of his way. He is huge, a big mamma jamma. So Lynch will come out of center with Rosado once again, his deep back. And he gives it to his full. No, he doesn't get it. And the pitch is bobbled. And Adi with his, Adi Abilo with his third fumble recovery on the game. Along with his huge pass reception. Definitely one of the MVP candidates tonight. Adi Abilo, something else tonight. What a play on defense. You see that? He read the quarterback, deflects the ball, then picks it up. Unbelievable. Olsen Hu taking over for tight end and defensive end, just like Olsen. Three fumble recoveries. A few tackles and a huge pass reception. Abilo, something else tonight. He is, this is the game of his career. A career night for Adi Abilo. And the Patriots looking to put the dagger in the coffin right now. Up by a touchdown, looking to make it two. So Wurzel will come on her center, receive the snap, give it to the Seco, who gains about four or five yards. Once again, solid yardage on first down for the Patriots. The clock is ticking. That's all you got to say. Stay in bounds. Run the ball, maybe a pass here and there to catch him off guard, play action, rollouts maybe. But you got to keep this clock ticking. You're up a touchdown. That's the important part. Less than seven minutes to go in the final quarter. My back is starting to ache here. Long there we night. see on the bottom of your screen, it is second and seven. And the... Uh, Highlanders showing blitz, and they do blitz from the outside, but the play is to the middle, nearly escaping the stunt, but not quite able to, as the seagull is taken down for a gain of about maybe one or two yards. Now on third and seven, once again, the play here is a rollout. He passes if it's open, he runs it, stays in bounds, keeps the clock ticking. Maybe you punt it, get the coffin corner. Yeah, play action definitely looks like it's in the works right here because you can't really force a pass downfield, maybe try and catch them off, off guards because an interception is a high possibility. You don't really just want to do a quick out pattern because also interception in the book, so maybe just a run up the middle, play action, option, you know, something along the conservative lines, and that's what they'll do. They'll give it to Ryan Green up the middle, who gains a respectable two or three yards, but is short of the first down, but as we see, the clock is continuing to run down near five minutes. And as the clock ticks, Wayne Hills gets stronger. The momentum still on their side. And as I look at my game stats, I note something here. Wayne Hills, zero turnovers. Excuse me, one turnover on an interception. Northern Highlands has four on three fumbles and an interception. That could be the difference. And Farina with yet another good punt. And it is going to roll down the sideline, out it around the nine-yard line. Farina... Although he hasn't come in on the offensive side of the ball, he has been the special teams MVP tonight. Special team stud, Jesse Farina. Punts inside the 20, touchbacks. They don't call him special teams for nothing. No, they don't. Because they're special. He's special. Offense wins games, defense wins championships. Special teams get you there too. So the Highlanders begin deep in their own territory with only five minutes left in this game. They need to go down 90 yards for a touchdown. And they start with a handoff to Rosado, bouncing it outside, finding a hole, bursting through it, but is shut down by the Patriots defense. A host of tacklers, about four yards on the play. Big hit by the Memo Gemma, Dan Zambacoli, as he comes flying across the wheels on the big guy. Very surprising. Well, Rosado, and he nails Rosado. Rosado's second effort got him more than the original four yards, carried the defenders an extra three, so it's going to be second and three. And the Highlanders give it to Rosado again, and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage, and number three, Joe Torre is back at quarterback, and the former quarterback, Frank Lynch, is back at receiver. Damacoli in on the tackle again. You gotta love this kid. A true leader in every sense of the word. Fights through the line. Gets in on the tackle. He's got a motor that never shuts off. He's the Energizer Bunny out there. Except the much bigger one. And he's not pink. <laughs> he is much bigger. 
Lur and his counterpart of the attack on the tapping line, also a big man. I talked about his squad numbers earlier. He's strong, and the two of them break up runs consistently. So it's third and very short here. Patriots stacked the line, but it doesn't look like he did any good. It looks like the Highlanders got the first down, and they did. So the Highlanders getting the 10 yards they needed, but the clock still running. I know it stopped, and not quite sure why, though. Maybe college rules here. The clock stops after a first down, and that is the rule. The ref spots the ball and blows his whistle, and the clock restarts. We're going down to 3.30 left in this game, and the Highlanders are in desperate need of a touchdown. So here's Torrey. They fake the run up the middle, and they give the reverse, and he's got room to run, but Abilio with a big tackle. If he didn't make that, that ride receiver, I believe, was Lynch. Could have been gone. Abilio. Big tackles, big plays, fumbles, big receptions. This kid is the total package on defensive end and tight end. No, I mean, if we gave out a game ball, he'd probably get it for today, just all over the place, making the big plays when they need him. But Northern Highlands does have something going. Uddy trying to fill enormous shoes left behind by Greg Olson, and tonight he is doing a good job of it. A great job of it. He actually is filling the shoes tonight. Oh, the Patriots looked like they stopped them. No, wait, that was first down. <laughs> My bad. So it's second and one. They're probably going to get the first down in two plays. But just about three minutes to go. The clock's still ticking. They're still down a touchdown. Right now, the clock is their worst, their own worst enemy. As they continue to run the ball, they will continue to run time off the clock. But I believe they have all three of their timeouts left, and the Patriots with two. And the ref's about to resume play as soon as he blows his whistle. And we are awaiting the blowing of the whistle. And there it is, and the clock continues to run. We are down to 310. So Torrey feels the snap, gives it to Rosado, who stiff arms a would-be tackler to the ground, and he almost breaks Kavanaugh's tackle. A very hard, resilient run right there by Rosado. Kavanaugh on the tackle for the Patriots. Cavanaugh once again with a big defensive play. First down, Highlanders. So as long as the Highlanders keep bringing up first downs, the clock will stop, and they will maybe accomplish their feat of putting seven on the board. So here's Torrey. Once again, Rosado with the carry. Maybe he could be coming a little too predictable. Might need to air it out here on second down. Great stop here by the Hills defense. Lurin, Damacoli again on the tackle. You know, I mean, it doesn't really appear that the Northern Highlands coaching staff has too much confidence in their passing game. I mean, you're down seven. There's two and a half minutes Zambelli, left, and you're the still running line, the ball. The, the middle linebacker receiving, receiving the call from Coach Ziza, giving it to the rest of his players, and they're ready for the play. So Torrey drops back to pass, and he is airing it down the left sideline. Make with the coverage. And it is caught. Oh my. The, the quarterback slash receiver, Lynch, with an outstanding play, hurtling Ryan Mick, coming down with the ball at around the 25 yard line, and the Highlanders are back in business. There's a penalty on the Highlands, though, so that ball's going to come back. Oh, that is just. Heartbreaking for the Highlanders right there. They think they got the play they needed. They're only 25 yards away from putting seven on the board. And here we go, they're over 70 yards away. Tough break for the Highlanders. Mink, good effort on the defensive back play. But Actually, he was unable to doing stop. Doing the math, I'm gonna correct myself. 62 yards away from the end zone. Thank you for that mathematical accuracy. Second and about 13. About to hit the two minute drill. So the clock ticking 207, 6, 5 as the Highlanders come down to the line. And we are officially at the two minute warning. The clock won't stop though as it goes back down to 157 and counting. And so they go back to the ground. Rosado is taken down by Zambelli, a force in the middle. And you got a question, the Rosado Highlanders coaches play calling here. I mean, 
let's see here. 125. You got a long way to go for the first down, and you're still running the ball. It's very predictable. Rosado is starting to show some fatigue. How much can he do? Can he run it 62 yards? I don't think so. He can't do it all himself. But right here, maybe the thinking was by the Highlanders, we're down by seven with under two minutes left. We're in four down territory right here. That was pretty much second down right there. That was second. that was pretty much a first down right there. So they still have two plays to work with. Probably going to air it out both times. And the timeout right there was called by the Highlanders. They're first of the second half. And you got to imagine they're going to burn the other two very shortly. If there was one word you could use to describe this team tonight, what would it be? Resilient. Same exact word I was thinking of. You're down 7 nothing in the fourth quarter at home. Home opener coming off a championship season. Everyone's hopes was flattened pretty much. The crowd was silent. And out of nowhere, Adi Abilio with the huge reception. Momentum shifted. The resiliency really showing. That has to be the play of the game. You're nine minutes away from going 0-2 after a state championship season, and you fight hard. Oh, and Abilio again in the backfield, and I believe that was a fumble. And if it was, I think it was recovered by the Patriots, but there was a flag on the play, possibly offsides on the Patriots. And it is a fumble. It's a the fumble. Patriots come up with it. Abilio with his second forced fumble on the game. Without a doubt, tonight's player of the game. Player of the game, Adi Abilio, gets in on the forced fumble there. And that's five turnovers for the Northern Highland so right Highlanders. Now, and that's right, really going to fight them. Right now, the Highlanders still with two timeouts. So the Patriots need a first down. And after they get that, they can just kneel the ball. And victory is theirs. Can you believe it? I was sure that the Northern Highlands quarterback was forward motion, but the referees have decided that no, his arm was still going back. And so Wayne Hills has gotten a fourth fumble tonight. Highlanders very sloppy. So Wurzel coming to the line of scrimmage. Most likely going to be a play to the Seagull. Maybe that pitch to the outside we saw earlier, but no, they're going to go right up the gut. The Seco getting the job done about seven to eight yards on first down. And that will pretty much seal the deal. Basically, all they have to do here is keep the ball on the ground, keep picking up yards, and just keep the ball in bounds. Don't let the clock stop. The Highlanders aren't even using one of their timeouts. They're just allowing the clock to run down. We're now at 118, 17, 115 remaining in this game. The Patriots 90 seconds away, no, 70 seconds away from victory. So the big... I and formation. once again, DeSico with the carry. He is taken down in the backfield. And the Highlanders will not call a timeout. The clock continues to run. We're now under a minute, 50 seconds, and counting 49 48. And the Patriots will walk out tonight winners. I see what the Highlanders are doing. They're going to save their timeouts for their offensive drive. They're going to air the ball out, rush to the line, spike the ball, timeouts all over the place. They're going to see what they can do. Yeah, but with 30 seconds left, and it's still third down, I don't think they're going to have another chance to get the ball. They'll call a timeout probably after this play. I don't really know what the thinking is right here. You definitely got to use your two timeouts here. Get the ball back with 50 seconds to spare. Maybe hope for some kind of prayer. But Ryan Green diminishes all hopes of the Highlanders coming back as he picks up an apparent first down. And that is a That's first down, be the end and of this game. that will be the ball game. With Ryan Green, a touchdown, and a big play right there. And the countdown is on. 10, 9, Nine eight, 8, 7, 7 6, 6, 5, 4, 3, 3 2, 2, 1. And the Wayne Hills Patriots in a huge come-from-behind game. All 14 points in the fourth quarter have won the ball game. Hills is going one and one right now, a big home opener victory, and they might save their season with that fourth quarter comeback. And one player who really left his heart and soul on the field tonight was Adi Abilo, by far the best player on the field tonight. You can't say enough about the kid, he dominated.
we're gonna little get a, we're gonna get a little comment from Grant Till, our sideline reporter. Well, Dave and Justin, I was just on the field. I got a brief talk with Coach Olson. Said he's extremely happy about the 14-7 victory over Northern Highlands. He was a little upset after the first half, but uh, he said that he gave him a little chat in the locker room. And he said they were ready to go, and as you can see, that's what happened. Thank you, Grant. Coach Olson's pep talk at halftime clearly was effective. And I am Justin Rubino, signing off for my co-commentators, Dave, Cody, and our sideline reporter, Grant Till.